Hello and welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy my festive Star Trek Christmas faux sweater as much as I do. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you and yours wherever you may be. Today I want to talk about a new project I'm just barely starting, the Pi to IEC. It builds upon other 21st century projects for our favorite 20th century computers. But first, a short story. When I was in high school in the mid-80s, my first ever computer purchase was a Commodore 64 with a dataset tape drive. I used turbo tape to make it slightly less painful to use, but it wasn't long until I upgraded to a 1541 disk drive using turbo disk at first and later Epic's fast load cartridge. Over the next couple of years, I was able to add an MPS 803 matrix printer, a DPS 1101 daisy wheel printer for typewriter quality output, and a 1520 pen plotter. When I went to college, I bought a Commodore 128D with its built-in 1571 disk drive, a 1581 drive, and a 1750 clone RAM expansion unit. I had a lot of fun with my system over the years. Naturally, I spent many hours playing video games, but I also taught myself basic programming and some 6502 assembly language. I used my computers for schoolwork, I would print papers for assignments, as well as printing program listings, and I would create cards, signs, and banners with Print Shop. I lost most of my equipment years ago. The only computer I still have from the 80s is a Commodore 16 that I picked up at a yard sale for $5. Recently, I started to rebuild my collection, and I have added a C64, C128, and C128D. I would really like to be able to use these computers for more than just gaming, but the lack of modern options for most things beyond disk drives makes that difficult. A while back I posted a question to the Commodore 64 128 group on Facebook asking for suggestions for modern hardware that is available to buy today, or at least that was available, until the current supply chain issues made parts hard to find. Many people chimed in with suggestions, but the best answer I got came from Robin, of 8-Bit Show and Tell. He pointed me to the 8-Bit Buyer's Guide, a list that's maintained by Greg Nasu and includes over 450 products, 100 creators, and 60 vendors. It's an awesome resource, but most of the products on the list only work with one or maybe just a few systems. The C64 is by far the best represented system, which you would expect given how many sold though there are items for other Commodore 8-bit computers. The most compatible items in the list appeared to be related to tape storage, which should work for all the Commodore 8-bit computers from the PET through the Commodore 128. Other than that, there were two standout products that work with everything starting with the VIC-20. The first was SD to IEC, a microcontroller-based solution that allows the computer to access SD cards, and the Pi 1541, a Raspberry Pi with a special board and software that emulates a 1541 drive exactly. These appeal to me because I can use them with all of my current equipment, and they should also work with future systems such as the Mega 65 and the Commander X16. The common thread between all of those machines is that they all have a serial IEC port. Unfortunately, I'm still left without the ability to print. This got me thinking about the Pi 1541. If it can emulate a 1541, why can't it emulate other IEC devices? There is nothing that stops a single device from providing multiple services, such as disk drive and printer functions. I took my idea to the Commander X16 forum. My proposal was to take a Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, a Pi 1541 board, and replace the Pi 1541 software with custom software that is not limited to just emulating a 1541. Now, don't misunderstand me. I think Pi 1541 is a great solution for those who need cycle-exact emulation of a 1541, but that level of emulation probably takes most of the power of the Raspberry Pi, 
leaving very little left over for other functionality. I plan for the Pi to IEC software to offer disk drive emulation that is on par with SD to IEC. It won't be cycle exact, but it should emulate all the common disk drive formats. In addition, I think it would be great if it could mount other types of archives and containers as read-only virtual drives. For example, you might have a disk image stored in a zip file to save space, and maybe it could just mount the zip file without having to unpack it first. Or even just a set of files in a zip file could be mounted as a read-only floppy drive. I've already mentioned printers. I would like Pi to IEC to emulate at least the most common printers that were available from Commodore. It might be able to send print jobs to a real printer, or maybe it would just write image or PDF files that could later be printed or shared. I know the 1520 plotter wasn't very common, but I did have one and I would like to be able to emulate it as well. I never saw anything other than disk drives and printers connect to the serial IEC bus directly, but that doesn't mean we can't do more. The Raspberry Pi, for example, supports HDMI output. I think it would be really cool if the host computer could control the attached monitor via Pi to IEC. It would not be a high speed connection, but I can imagine ways to use it. It could be useful to display debugging output while running a program on the main display, or it could be treated as a virtual printer, plotter, or even a terminal. Um, it could accept ASCII, Petsky, ANSI, or some other type of terminal output. Networking is available for the C64 through add-on hardware. Perhaps it is available for other Commodore computers as well, I'm really not sure. Regardless, the Raspberry Pi has networking built in, and it could allow the host computer access to networks such as the internet. USB is another feature missing from our 8-bit computers. Pi to IEC could allow the host to access keyboards, mice, serial ports, or other USB devices. Everything I've described this far relies on physical connections that can be made to the Raspberry Pi, but I think it could also create virtual services that don't exist in the real world. These services could accept input and generate output for any purpose desired. One example would be database access. The Commodore drives supported relative files that allowed random record access, but the file size was limited to the capacity of a floppy disk, and each row was limited to a maximum of 254 bytes. I would like to implement a virtual database device that would allow the host computer to access a SQLite database, blowing away the size limitations of relative files as well as allowing access beyond simple record numbers. Another idea I have is for a virtual software builder device. It could automatically compile or assemble programs whenever the source code was saved, allowing a more efficient edit, compile, debug cycle on the hardware without having to resort to emulation or copying files to media to sneaker net to the 8-bit system. I think these ideas just scratch the surface of what might be possible with Pi to IEC. I hope you find the idea interesting, and if you do, let your friends know, and please click like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on the project as it progresses. If you have any ideas that I haven't mentioned, or any opinions on what should be done first, please leave a comment. It will help me prioritize development of the system. I've bought Pi 1541 hats for the Pi 3 and the Pi Zero. I already have a Pi 3, and I'm waiting on a Pi Zero to arrive. No additional hardware should be necessary. Once all the hardware has arrived, I'll test Pi 1541 software with it to make sure everything is connected and working as expected. Next, I'll start work on a bare metal application that acts as a number of serial IEC devices. 26 devices should be possible if desired. Even more could be supported by allowing for subdevices. Think about how dual floppy units allowed two drives to exist on one device, 
by prefixing the file name with a drive number and a colon. I see no reason this couldn't be done for arbitrary devices. At the very least, each device number should be able to support 10 sub-devices this way. The computer would never be able to open that many connections at once, but it could still be useful. One additional device number would be reserved as a meta device that could be used to control all the other devices in the system. It could be used to mount, to unmount, to attach different bits of hardware at various points in time. In addition to the standard serial IEC protocol, I would also like to include support for the FAST protocol supported by the Commodore 128 and the Jiffy protocol or some similar protocol. This would allow much faster transfers on supported computers while still allowing access by a stock computer. Again, please don't forget to leave a comment with your thoughts and click like and subscribe to stay up to date on the project. Thank you so much for watching. Until we meet again, take care.